We're often asked what it takes to set up four diagnostics properly, so we've pulled everything together into one complete guide. By the time you finish this video, you'll know how to register with Ford properly, all of the different software platforms and what they're used for, the hardware that you need from pass-through up to OE, any optional extras, and training and technical support to keep things running smoothly. We're going to give you the knowledge to bring Ford coding, programming and diagnostics fully in-house. So let's go. The first step in your Ford journey is registration. Like with every manufacturer, you can't just download the software and get going. You'll first of all need to register on Ford's service information portal. The regions currently supported include Western Europe, Eastern Europe and Russia, North America, Australia and Oceania. And here's what Ford will expect from you during registration. CERMI certification if you're in a relevant European region, NASTIF registration if you're in the US or Canada, a VAT certificate and no trademark infringement. So that's no logos on your website, social media, building or vehicles. Ford UK and Europe have recently announced stricter rules. We recommend not trying to use a license from another region to use in the region that you're in. This can jeopardize your account and they have even been known to shut accounts down because of it. Ford runs three different platforms, IDS, FDRS, FJDS. First up is IDS. Now coverage starts from 96 and ends closely in line when the EcoBoost range came in. So it tapers out from around 2011 to 2014. It's what you'll need if you're working on older Fiestas, Transits or Mondeos. So next up is FDRS and that continues from where IDS finishes depending on the model. So it's the current platform for newer Ford vehicles. So if you're working on Pumas, the newer Transit range or the Mac-E, this is the platform you'll be working in. For workshops running a generic pass-through device, FJDS is your option. It doesn't give you the same functionality as that of the IDS software, but it does allow reprogramming of modules up to 2018. So think of it as your lighter version of the software. Ford uses a pay-as-you-go license model. At £15.79 an hour, you'll get access to the software and to technical data. You can pay by the hour, day, week or annually, depending on how much you're seeing Ford vehicles in your workshop. Updates roll out every two to three weeks. A standard update will take one to one and a half hours and a firmware update can take closer to two hours. It's not mandatory to stay on the latest version, but if you're working on the latest vehicles, we advise all of our customers to stay on the latest version. Once you've got the software, the next step is choosing the right hardware. And with Ford, you've got two options, pass-through or OE. If you're just starting out, pass-through is a really good entry level into OE diagnostics. Ford allows the FDRS and FJDS to be run on any compliant J2534 device. It works well for programming and diagnostics on newer vehicles and the cost barrier is much lower than if you're jumping straight into OE diagnostics. Note with pass-through there are some limitations and restrictions so functionality isn't going to be 100%. One of our most popular tools for pass-through is the Bosch MTS 6 6531. For full coverage, you'll want the same tool that the Ford dealer uses, and that's the VCM3. It works with IDS and FDRS and covers vehicles from 1996 up to present day. To run it properly, you'll need a dedicated laptop, and the specs we recommend are Windows 11 Pro, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD, and two USB 3.1 ports. Two options we recommend are the rugged Dell Latitude 5420 and 5430. These laptops are designed for whatever you're gonna throw at them in the workshop. The VCM3, you'll be able to do full diagnostics, programming and flashing, coding and adaptions, security access, service functions, technical data, and digital service uploads. So what are the add-ons that will help upgrade this setup? First of all, battery support. This one isn't optional. This is essential. It will keep the voltage steady while you're programming. Next is a picoscope, docking station, and diagnostics trolley. The last two will really help you move around your workshop. Now let's talk about training and support. Ford software is powerful, but it's not always the most intuitive to use. Basic functions are straightforward, but once you get into security programming and module configuration, it can get tricky if you've never used dealer level software before. That's why we always build training in from the start. So when you buy a Ford OE 
bundle from us we'll give you one hour's free training and that's enough to get you started we'll teach you the basics help you to navigate the software and from there you can take it to your technicians in the workshop and they can have a go themselves build their confidence and speed that's where dealer tool support comes in oe software doesn't always behave updates come every two to three weeks firmware updates can take hours and sometimes you'll come across a fault code or a procedure that you've never seen before and that's where our guys come in they'll dial in remotely they'll help you set up help you with an update or they'll even stay on a live job with you think of it as having a factory level hotline ford itself charges one pound 60 per minute to call their technicians we're there for you on hand whenever you need us training gets you started support keeps you running and together they make sure ford diagnostics doesn't slow your workshop down so that's the full picture of how to set up ford diagnostics i hope you found it useful for the full buyer's guide on ford and for all the products we mentioned you can see them in the links below or go to our website maverickdiagnostics.com we're always posting new videos on oe and aftermarket diagnostics so make sure you hit subscribe to see the next ones